Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Raphael's Defense Magazine. Every program will be dedicated to a different subject with all relevant experts, data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. Today, even the sky is not the limit. AI and data exploitation from images. <laughs> And with me in the studio are Jasmine Inbar, BD and Marketing Manager, and Zev Rich, Intelligence Systems Product Line Manager, both from the CSI Cyberspace and Intelligence Director at, at Rafael. Thank you very much both for joining me. So Jasmine, we'll start with you. What exactly is the challenge that you're trying to solve? Yes, yeah, so there is an enormous amount of sensors covering the face of the Earth. Um, whether it's their UAVs, drones, manned aircraft, the ground sensors, and hundreds of Earth observation satellites, which generate many petabytes of imagery. And that creates a vast amount of data that uh, the users today do not have the means to um, extract and uh, the, in the insights that they, requ that they require. So, um, what, in order to do that, and in order to deal with that amount of data, you will require thousands of people, and you can agree with me, Yoav, that this is impossible. As a matter of fact, 98% of the data uh, which is collected is stored and never, and never, and never used, uh, so it's a lose-lose situation. We pay for the collection and the storage for something that is not usable, and, and it's, it's a waste. Besides dealing with uh, the big data in terms of the volume of it, we have to deal with variety of data. IR, uh, Vs, SAR, multispectral, and uh, video, of course. And uh, finally, there is the challenge of the battlefield. The enemy today has a variety of ways to cover their actions, whether if uh, you know hiding underground or in between civilians. We deal with uh, time-critical targets, TCTs, and therefore, we need to um, extract the relevant insights for the users from the strategic level to the tactical forces with actionable intelligence. So Zev, what exactly is the solution? So the solution is AI. AI, artificial intelligence. Raphael's Imulite intelligence system is based on a very sophisticated and um, capable AI engine. And what this does actually is replaces the human being. So as Jasmine told us, there's so much data coming in and there are never enough people and it will actually get worse and worse over time because we, don't, we cannot grow in terms of people and we always have more data coming in and we can always add more computing power. So once we teach our computers to think for us and that's the artificial intelligence, there's no limit to the amount of data you can deal with. Now when I say AI, what I mean, think about what an image analyst does. An image analyst, what he usually does, spends his time looking at images and looking for objects, suspicious objects in the enemy areas, or he looks for changes. He tries to compare today's image to yesterday's image. All of these things can be done automatically. The image analyst looks for trends in, in the enemy formation, can be done automatically. All of this is done within Emulate. Now, it's not just AI, because the algorithm, algorithm itself is extremely sophisticated. It's also the data. Because today, in order for an algorithm to replace a human being, you have to teach it. How do you teach an algorithm? By feeding it with real data. Rafael has large amounts of data that we have due to our partnerships with different militaries around the world. So we have the data, we have the algorithms, and we can actually replace the human in the loop or supplement the human. But Zev, everybody is doing AI today and it's a buzzword that everybody uses. You know, I do AI, I do everything. So what's the difference? What's the added value that you bring? First of all, you're right. Everybody says AI. You ask somebody a question, the answer is AI. I just did that myself. AI is something that's in the world, but AI is not enough. So AI is the heart of our system, but the system has to go A to Z, end to end. Our system, first of all, is based on many, many years of intelligence experience, both within Rafael and many of our employees are actually ex-military experts who were intelligence officers themselves. They know how to define exactly what needs to be done. So first of all, you know what needs to be done. Then you have to be able to have a system that goes the whole, the whole way. Ingest many, many images of different kinds. As Jasmine said, IR, uh, um, SAR, different kinds of images, visual, RGB, everything. It all comes into the system. Now you have a pile of data. Now comes the data science part of things to organize it, to structure the data. And every pixel to have it archived, indexed, and geographically placed in the right place. Once you do that, then the AI kicks in. 
the AI, we have a rule engine that defines which image needs to be used which AI algorithm. The algorithm creates insights. And then the last stage is how do you take these insights and bring them out to the field? So Jasmine, back to you. Um, I understand why armies need that, intelligence services, uh, defense ministries, etc. Does it have any uh, civil use? Yeah, absolutely. So Rafaela has taken uh, its core capabilities, as uh, Zev just uh, described, from the defense industry and made them available, apply them to deal with uh, similar challenges in the civilian world. Such as? Um, for example, utilities. They can monitor the grid and uh, use it for predictive uh, maintenance or preventive maintenance. Also, another example is um, disaster management. We are currently working with uh, several customers to um, provide them a service to assist with uh, response and recovery efforts post-disaster, any kind of disaster. And it is provided as a cloud-based, simple-to-use application, which means the user does not have to be an intelligence uh, expert. And the report generated from this system includes the exact coordinate of each and every anomaly, and that saves the team's precious time to go and look for them manually uh, by foot. So back to you, Zev, uh, you know, uh, uh, states are fighting terrorism all, all around the world, uh, fighting enemies all around the world, obviously. I, I can see so many possible uses of such a, a system, but uh, uh, as Jasmine said, the civil world might be the future. Yes, there's no doubt that the civil world is certainly the future, but I, I want to just step back to the military for a moment. Um, in the military world, it's... Even the military world, which may be somewhat limited to civilian, it's a very large world with different needs. It starts from the national level headquarters, so there could be a major headquarters in, 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 the, in, the, in the country. It could also be a tactical need used by the soldiers in the field. They want to maneuver. How can a soldier maneuver he doesn't see ahead of him? He can send a drone. But what happens nowadays? The drone flies ahead of him, sends back a video stream, which is great. He has a tablet, he sees. But that's not enough, because now, okay, he can maybe look at the video, you want the AI to help him as well, to identify threats, to identify changes maybe that happen, maybe explosive devices, to be able to track cars. All these things can happen automatically within the emulate system that's in his hand, actually. It's virtually in his hand when he does that. Interesting. Jasmine Inbar, Zev Rich, thank you very much for joining me today. And that's all for today. We'll be back shortly with another edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.